Welcome everyone to a special, special episode of the Benzinga Cannabis Hour. My name is Javier Hase, Managing Director for Benzinga Cannabis and CEO for El Planteo, and I'm joined by Benzinga's very own cannabis editor, Tony Noto. Tony, how are you doing? I'm good now that I'm sitting here chatting with you, man. I've been getting ready for this interview. Man, such a great show. Today, we're joined by Scotty Sire, great influencer, YouTuber, you know. Guy just the, shy, you know, just at. shy of 3 million subscribers on YouTube. and. Thanks to us, this will probably put him over the threshold. He's going to hit 3 million subscribers, thanks to us. Uh, I am sure. And we're also joined by Jay Boyce, his co-founder. Uh, they both co-founded with some other friends, of course, ICBD. Uh, ICBD is a CBD brand, uh, and the guys are going to tell us all about it. So yeah, he's got a lot of friends. Uh, friends. <laughs> he's got a lot of fans. And what these fans don't may not know is that he is a right out of the gates CBD entrepreneur, which is pretty cool. So we're going to introduce them to something new today. So excited. So Karen, let's bring them on. Are they here? I think they are. Guys, <laughs> how is it going? Scotty, I got to say, like, I wasn't familiar with your work, but I was listening to your last song, Don't Be Sad. And if there's ever a cannabis friendly song, uh, that is a song. That is a song to sing along to after a cool. toke or two. Thank you. That's we branded the CBD after Don't Be Sad, or at least my line of it. So, yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's over a million hits. You got 3 million subscribers. That's that's YouTube orgasmic sensation right there. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you. So what was the first million live? You know, when you when you saw the M show up, you know, in your first social network, which was it? Was it on Vine or where did you see like the first M show up in, on your profile? That was on Vine. Rest in peace. But um Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I remember Vine. How did it feel? It, it felt cool. I feel like since I was like, I was growing pretty like consistently, it wasn't like a, well, I just hit a million. Like it was kind of oh. like, all oh, right, is it 999,000? Then I was at a million. It was like, all right, cool. I hit it. But like, it wasn't like a, I'm also not a very excitable person. So like I hit a million and I was like, dope, keep going. Now, now it's 2 million. At what point do the YouTube folks call you and like, hey, we're going to, you know, verify you on YouTube. You can start making money with us. Like to, how does it work nowadays? I remember I looked into it back in the day, but it got confusing after a while. I started my YouTube channel like six or seven years ago, like before I really had a platform. Okay. Uh, so it was like, I think you had to have like 10,000 views per, I don't, yeah, I don't even know. It was like a, there was a small threshold you had to hit in order to be eligible to sign up to get ads, which was just like Google AdSense through YouTube. And uh, honestly, it was so long ago, I can hardly remember. <laughs> it was like a hundred <laughs> years ago for you. All right. So don't be sad. I clicked on the link with the don't be sad CBD, but I got to ask, cause this was uh, curious to me. It was a pretty big production for the music video. Did you film that during the pandemic times? Like, and if so, how'd you pull that off? Um, well, I paid extra for all the COVID insurance, yeah. like three sanitization stands and a temperature checker. Everyone had to wear masks unless we were on camera. Honestly, like when you take your mask off and you're jumping around each other, on camera it's like why did i wear the mask off camera anyways but, <laughs> but um we did the precautions tried to make it as safe as possible and it worked out yeah it did work out it's a fun video and it Thanks. still gives the right message too right like people watching out where your fans and saw this video and had the same question it's like well i mean you do as much as you can but it's still important that we keep those protocols right even if just to remain you know accustomed to them you know one of those things <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. it's gonna be here for a long time so i figure <laughs> Might as well get used to it. I'm trying to yeah. learn how to deal with it. You deal with the anxiety and stress, you know, of, of this whole situation. Well, CBD products are a great way to deal with the anxieties and stress of the situation that we're living in, having trouble sleep at night. If there was ever a year where CBD and cannabis came in handy, it was to 2020. Yeah. Although the people in the 60s were probably different. I mean, the 60s were, were a messed up decade. So, the, you know, there's no coincidence. That's where like the flower child, you know, sort of character came about. Yeah. But it was very much, I think, relatable to 2020. I mean, this is the year of not only a crazy election, but also murder hornets, a pandemic. Aliens were hinted at, you know, like the UFOs were covered on CNN. Like it's been a nutty year. So if there's ever a year to, to, <laughs> I, to stress relief with uh, CBD, it's this. Yeah. I get a question though. What happened to the murder hornets? I heard about them for a few days and then it was like they were gone. 
<laughs> it was just like, all right, be scared about this real quick and then forget about it. <laughs> yeah. I think it's, it's just the planet giving us a bunch of additional signals, like the fires and, and, and all these things, like just stay home, dude. Like don't go out. <laughs> yeah. Not- you know, oh, from, you know your cbd so i mean kind of you know that's a good segue as good as any like tell yeah. us about your history with cbd with cannabis with hemp right you know personally both of you guys and, and then we'll get into I see. yeah because jay you're the ceo correct yes yeah so how did you guys meet how did you guys join forces uh can we tell that story you can tell the story you probably I will. Okay. I also am a partner at a social media marketing company years and years ago when Scotty was still on Vine. I was Mm -hmm. doing social media marketing at the time, just independently trying to get my friends deals. And then I ended up with this other company and we had a big opportunity to go to the Super Bowl and take some Viners and Scott happened to be one of them. So through my years of doing social media marketing, I, I've met a ton of people like Scott and become friends with some of them. Best friends with me. Best friends with some <laughs> of them. And uh, yeah, so so that's that's really worked out and given me a lot of experience in running certain types of companies and CBD, obviously, and social media marketing kind of are perfectly aligned with one another. It's one of the only ways you can really promote CBD is through social channels. So that's how I met Scott. But then just over the last like that was like five years, six years ago, almost right when you moved yeah, to LA. Like six years ago. Yeah. So just over that time, we've become really close. And uh, now we live together. And a little over a year ago, this kind of just idea formed to start this company. And I can go deeper into that and it's got some time. But yeah, let's get into the nitty gritty. I would love to know, like, we just just sitting around one day hanging out and just being like, let's start a company together. Let's go in on this because it's different. <laughs> To be friends is one thing, but to be business collaborators is another. It's a totally different beast. And it could ruin friendships too. It's got to be challenging. Essentially, Jay and I are both like health conscious, fit kind of guys. We like working out. So I'd always go to his apartment gym a couple of years ago up until we moved into here. And every time we'd work out, we'd talk about different business ideas and what's going on in the world. And I had like first, not first experimented with CBD, but really used it when I was drinking a lot. And I decided I want to quit for a month because I was drinking every single night. I quit for a month and would just have CBD tea to help me go to sleep at night. And Mm. like, I really liked the effects of CBD and what it did for me because I drink because I have anxiety or whatever. And I feel like I can't go to sleep at night unless I get something to help me like calm down, shut me off. CBD was really positive for me in that way. Jay's been in the like cannabis industry, kind of working in different areas with it and had the idea and brought it up to me while we were working out. Why don't we do an influencer CBD company? Because it's something that aligns really well with your brand and you use it. Um, We can make sure that we know all the things that are going in it and we can make sure to make a good product and then we'll feel really comfortable promoting it instead of promoting someone else's brand. Essentially, we were like, yeah. let's start a company using products that we like to use. We wanted to have full control because as you know, especially in the CBD space, as of right now, it's fairly unregulated. So the only ways to promote CBD is through influencer marketing. You can't buy ads on Instagram. You know, it's still federally, technically federally yeah. legal. And I think the rules are even stricter on Facebook too. Yeah. We have Facebook mm-hmm. and Instagram there. You know, you can't do anything there. There's a few channels you can do paid promotion through, but it's pretty limited. And, you know, being an unregulated market, we were being approached as influencers constantly by CBD companies because once these CBD companies get a little seed money, they go, oh, we better start promoting through influencers. They start reaching out to all these influencers. So you have like these 50 to 100 different CBD companies doing influencer marketing, but you don't know anything about what they're actually putting in there. It's unregulated. I mean, up to 70% of CBD products are either underestimate what they have or just completely inaccurate. And what that That's means. right. Yeah. Uh, Javier and I have a colleague, uh, two colleagues who wrote about that recently. Just the CBD labels are inaccurate. They're basically lying. They're lying yeah. to their customers. So We're not lying, right? We are not lying. <laughs> <laughs> That's what we do here, man, at Benzinga. We keep you honest. You better not be lying to us. No, I mean, we, we know that that is a problem and we, as influence ourselves, we don't want to put our name on these products just to find out right. six months later that some company so is not telling the truth. So we're like, let's just take full control. And that was actually one of the biggest learning processes for us was actually sourcing these partners and suppliers that we can work with. Eventually we want to be vertically integrated, but right now we have to source the best quality from people we trust. So we've met in person, all the people we work with, you know, I've toured facilities, I've made sure that they actually, so that took almost 
it took a lot longer to get this off the ground than we thought it would. It was a yeah. lot of like setup process. It was a lot like of trying setup. different oils and seeing like what has a weird aftertaste, what yeah. doesn't, like what yeah. the amount of gummies we've <laughs> sampled is insane. We've gotten gummy samples from all over and it's hard to find the ones where you're like okay like well, well let's dial it back i mean javier I'm, i have a question so if you want to jump in go ahead i have a couple but like what, what, what do you look for right what, what were you looking for when selecting you know some of these cbd products right you say like the aftertaste and of course you know transparency when it comes to test results but like in, in general like what was the process like how did you yeah. pick one i feel like jay is a little bit better for this as well but like <laughs> the um for for gummies or oils or whatever we try to get like vegan options and stuff that like if you're vegan you can use the cbd as well like something that makes it so like everybody can take it a good taste and good quality material inside of it yeah there's a few things that like typically our process would go i would source the things and then i'd bring them to scott and he would say oh no totally not what i want and i'm like shoot now i gotta (laughs) gotta start over completely um and then i would source something new but it's all you know it's got to be in a facility that's you know obviously that 2018 farm bill compliant that's first and foremost and then we only want to do iso 9000 facilities too which is the testing regulation that makes sure that it's top to bottom no minerals no weird things in it because a lot of these companies they'll just do potency tests or they'll just do and so that's something we're also i'm working on right now is actually working with a partner here that we have a, just our own contact with that would do all of our third-party testing even so we want two tests. We want them to test it for us. Then we want to test it independently. Yeah. Um, so that's a big thing for us too. Moving forward is like very transparent on all this. But if it if they meet those those you know classifications, then it has to be about well, is the taste good? Taste is good. Product is good. We know where it's sourced. We know it's you know from Oregon or from Kentucky or whatever it is. You know. I think that taste and flavor and texture and all that stuff is extremely important like outside of all the scientific stuff to do with it because a lot of people consider cbd a placebo so if we want to source gummies we want to make sure they taste good so they're like (laughs) all right if this isn't doing anything at least it also tastes good (laughs) i I gotta ask when you're when you're sampling right what was like the difference that just hit you like this is the winner like what was it is it is it just the taste or was it just how quickly the effects came through i know that the you know tune us in there for our oils it was the lack of taste for us the yeah. lack of taste no there's no flavor in it no weird <laughs> aftertaste it's yeah. Awesome. okay yeah i mean i mean i think the most difficult one is like the gummies like this is something we're, we're about to launch we're just coming out with this this took us like six months to find and a big part of it yeah is like the taste the consistency not having that weird aftertaste it's like bitter you know also and- everything is like changing. We went through like the idea that we, should we release this or should we release the new nano water soluble stuff that hits really fast? And for the gummies, like they had gummy bear shaped ones and then they're like, no, that's gonna be banished. We're not gonna have those shapes anymore. Like there were so many different little- Yeah, because it can't, why? Because it can't look like candy, correct? Yeah, it can't look like candy because it's an 18 plus product and some places 21 plus. 18 plus universally now, but- they don't want it. They don't want things that are going to be appealing to children, you know? So yeah, it, it is constantly changing. CBD is in an interesting spot where it's still evolving so fast, you know, and they're, they're figuring out new things. And even in THC side, like I know you guys probably know about like Delta nine and all these weird new developments. Cause you know, the Delta eight is regulated, but Delta nine is unregulated. So every day it like changes and evolves and they're going to figure out some new way to extract cbd that's going to be 10 times more potent at, at half the cost you know it's like video cards like every yeah. year they come out with a new video card that's twice as fast at half the cost yeah so javier did, did jay say something stupid i noticed you laughed no 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 not <laughs> <laughs> this is kind of my, my natural setting i'm <laughs> I'm messing around. I mean, it's a good thing right now. And also, you know, I'm a cannabis lover, so that helps, you know, and, and you were talking about aftertaste and to me, that is really important as well, right? I love cannabis. So I love the taste, something that tastes like cannabis, but suddenly I give my mother, you know, some CBD drops and she goes like, this tastes horrible. And I'm, I go like, what do you mean? And she's like, yeah, it's bitter. It sucks. I like, know it yeah. tastes like, it's like, well, yeah, I don't like it. You yeah. know, so it's key to reach the mainstream that it doesn't taste like something you don't know what it is, right? Like the, the whole point of this is like you can take it without it disrupting your entire, you know, routine or changing, you know, your your mood 
you know, yeah. as soon as you take it and in terms of, so I have a question, you know, an unrelated question, but you kind of, I mean, something Tony was talking about is, you know, working with friends and you kind of have a trifecta. You work together, your roommate, your friends, like, how do you deal with that? Yeah, you guys can't have a business dispute. Otherwise it's going to be like the odd couple or something yeah. like that. <laughs> Like a line the middle of the house, like this is my side now. Yeah, yeah. We do we do generally keep to ourselves unless we want to be hanging out while we're, you know, living together. We'll come out and watch a movie together. If we both feel like watching a movie, if we don't, then I'm in my room, he's in his room. So we're not like spending all of our time together. Yeah. And then as far as business goes, we're both very like logical individuals and like we don't let our tempers or any sort of like aggressiveness come out when it comes to business i feel like there's a lot of people that like even in our friend group that we could see being like an issue to work with but we knew early on from like the way that we are as people that it wouldn't be a problem I say it's got like the only person like only person i could live with so it makes it that much easier to like work with him like i have difficulty living with other people because i need my own space i need my own time but because we are so similar in the way that we interact and stuff it, it makes it pretty easy to work and live together yeah and, you know scott's got like a million things going on at all times he's making music he's making youtube videos he's you know he's doing merch he's doing so many different things and he's doing cbd that a lot of it falls on me to make sure that i'm making it easy for him to make the decisions to be there if he needs like if we have a decision to be made i know i only have a limited amount of his time <laughs> so we we're very streamlined and that that yeah. is also good too because i'm like i'm not controlling in any way when it comes to it like i'm there for like approval and like my opinion and stuff but it's not like we're butting heads being like no we have to use this gummy not that gummy it's, yeah. it's more like a a very intelligent conversation <laughs> where we say yeah it tastes good the texture is nice it has the right amount of CBD, it's broad spectrum, and all right, we're good. <laughs> well, you know, it's interesting. It's uh, that what you guys said, you know, might go over some people's heads, but, you know, I took the seminar once for the uh, filmmaker. It was an Oscar-winning filmmaker. He got involved a little later, and uh, what he was talking about was when you're younger, you know, it takes years to really master anything. And what's key is finding your band, you know, and you might not realize that the people you team up with aren't, suitable bandmates and so many projects don't go anywhere because the folks maybe they're buddies in their spare time you know and for fun but to make business collaborators it doesn't mix so right. you guys found your band like you said like some friends ah maybe they we are a little bit more angsty and not suitable to launch a startup with but you guys it was different like you could put things aside and really come to the table as as entrepreneurs in a way that other friends can't yeah, 100%. It's all about having a good team. And like, I've noticed that with all the other aspects of things that I work into, like when I'm making music and stuff like that, it's like, I got to have a good producer. I got to have a good PR team. Yeah. You know, like everybody has to be good for it to all work out. And yeah, we're lucky. We work together well. And our other friends that are part of the company also are just like, they just fit into the team. We've got Todd Smith, Kyle Slobotsky, Joe Wigner. Yeah. Wagner. I always say his name wrong. <laughs> well, walk us through how this team came together because, you know, what you said before, you didn't take the easy way out. You could have leveraged your 3 million subscribers on YouTube and just went to a, a brand that already exists and mm -hmm. said, hey, I'll just promote your brand. You know, just pay me X amount, whatever it is, and I'll promote the crap out of it on Instagram or whatever. But you didn't do that. So what was like the step one? Like you guys form an LLC. Did you reach out to folks who didn't have connections that maybe they were just, you know, making gummies on their own in their spare time? Like, how do you get from that point to the jar? You know what I mean? What were you looking for? You said you spent like several months trying to find like the right product, Jay. Yeah, I think we formed our we formed our LLC. One of our my best friend growing up, Joe Wagner, who is also uh, he's the CFO of our company. He's a a finance guy and he helps us with all of our finance. So he was a perfect fit. And then Kyle Slobotsky, like he mentioned, he actually launched Loom Cannabis in Michigan. They have 18 dispensaries or something like that crazy now, 40,000 square foot grow. He's was out there for four years doing that. He has a wealth of knowledge in the cannabis space. He helped us kind of get in touch with CBD distributors early on that, that Loom had worked with that they had already done their independent sourcing from. So that was a really big, like early step for us. Um, connections. The connection. Yeah, you got to make the connection. Todd Smith, who's like Scott's best friend growing up, is also an influencer. 
And we just wanted him to be involved because we do feel like you were talking about kind of when you have your your people and you know that you can trust them. Like I have Joe, who I've been friends with since I was five years old. I also have Joe, who I was friends with since I was 25 years old. <laughs> right? You were friends growing up. We're friends grown up. Okay. You guys were only friends because you lived nearby each other. Yeah. Dude, they, 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 he's got the one up on you because they probably played like Nintendo together and shit. That's like, absolutely you know, true. Nintendo Power Rangers. Um, they have everything. that that background, you know. They have yeah. that background, and he has that with Todd. He, oh, okay. he grew up with Todd. But we we kind of have these, this like group of people here. You know, all four of us are like really close. So it was like a very easy thing to be like, oh, okay, like we're gonna do this together. Like Scott and Todd obviously have the reach. You know, I have some some knowledge about startups. You know, this is I've done this a few times before. <laughs> <laughs> is that a good thing? Or some of them are good. <laughs> some of them have failed. Some of them have done really well. It's, yeah, it's yeah, yeah. pretty hit or miss. Um, and then Joe, obviously with the finance, Kyle with the, the cannabis, it all just kind of fit together. Like everything just kind of fit together. And then, yeah, I just started, we just started sourcing, you know, talking to people that Kyle knew, talking to people that I knew, having worked in the cannabis industry for a while. So, and it definitely is a lot of props to Jay for all the, the hours on the computer, going over the website, calling people and all that stuff. Cause I'm not doing that. I'm, I'm <laughs> you're singing, I'm, don't be sad, <laughs> singing, don't be sad. And I'm tasting the stuff that he orders. <laughs> Perfect- that's the job that I, that's the dream job right there is I'm just going to sit and just taste everything. Perfect. And then, you know, a story here and there saying, check out my CBD. <laughs> <laughs> so, oh man. Good business model. So what about Ted's line? Do you want to tell us a little bit about that? You know, uh, sorry, Ted's t- Todd's. <laughs> Ted, Ted or Todd? It's Todd, right? Todd, yeah. yeah. Todd. <laughs> well, we started off with a different business model where we were like, do we want to do like each influencer has like their own line? And now yeah. we have like the startup line of don't be sad CBD oils and the gummies, but we don't have like a specific line for Todd. He's more of just the face of the company. So we started him with the topical role, but now he's just a part of everything. Yeah. Okay. And we're all part of which, everything. Which is kind of going to be the ultimate goal is just like building ICBD other than we do love like the don't be sad messaging in line. It's like so perfect for CBD and it's Scott. It's such an established line for Scott. So kind of the idea is if it is somebody who has that like Scott, who has established their own brand and wants to bring their brand to CBD, then it makes sense for us to do that. And we're willing to do that for other, other influencers moving forward. But if someone like Todd, who doesn't really have his own established brand outside of it, he can just promote the CBD as a whole. And that he's more like excited about that. Obviously, we want people to promote things they feel good about. Yeah. He is an athletic dude, loves being athletic, boxing all the time. So it's like he loves promoting muscle rub, which is perfect. We love that. So like yeah. person kind Going of after other influencers and celebrities as well, right? And yeah. as follow-up is a follow-up question. If you could get one person to get involved with the with the company, whatever celebrity, like you know, you don't have to know them at all. Who would it be? Like Any celebrity. whatever celebrity. Well, I want to hear who you would say, and then I'll say who I would say. Um, well, I wasn't, I don't know. I guess maybe I'm thinking semi-realistic. Tana Mojo just made $3 million in one month on OnlyFans. I think she'd be great to partner with us to sell some CBD vape pens. Oh, damn. Tana would be good. <laughs> damn. Tana, what's her last name? Mojo. Tana Mojo. Okay. I think that's how you say it. I used to say it. Mangieyu. <laughs> I don't know okay. how it is Mojo <laughs> from the way it's spelled, but I believe her. Um, All right. Damn, what line say, of work is she in? <laughs> YouTuber and uh, Instagrammer and superstar. Okay. MVP. All right, Tana Mojo. I have never heard of her, so I will have to look her up. That is blasphemy, sir. <laughs> well, here's the thing, and he, this ties into my question for you. If I've been, you know, sort of waiting for the moment. Was what's your audience like? Because I'm I'm a little older than you. I'm I'm in my mid 30s. I uh, just had my 31st birthday. I'm not really into the YouTuber influencer scene. Like mm-hmm. I, I'm still looking at, you know, I have my podcast that I listen to, whatever I have. I know what I look for and the algorithms know what I want. Who is your audience? And do you know like how old they are? Cause, and are they even able to buy CBD products? Well, according to my demographics, my primary audience is 18 to 24 years old. Okay. Of course, there is a lot of younger kids that are probably using their parents or their older brother's YouTube account to watch my videos. So I don't know how realistic any of these statistics are, but hopefully I have a large percentage of people that are 18 and 24 in my audience and then 24 to 32, whatever the brackets are. 
you know, we have some like 30 year olds that are watching our videos. And then you got like my mom, my dad, <laughs> the, the ratio there. Yeah. Um, <laughs> if I wasn't an influencer, then I wouldn't know who influencers were. Cause I, I don't watch other people's videos unless I'm in them, to be honest. Like yeah. I have a hard time following up with like TikTok, like Jay and my girlfriend, they love scrolling through TikTok and like watching videos. And for some reason I cannot like latch on and like- I couldn't. Yeah, I couldn't get it either. I tried. I just got verified on Instagram. So now I'm like, please, 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 like, don't go out of fashion. I cannot start again. <laughs> <laughs> I really had to leave Facebook because that's for old people. You know, Twitter is great. I use it all the time, but there's not a lot to it. It's just like yeah. tech. You know, so like, fuck is a whole different thing. And I'm trying to figure out how to do it without like, filming myself. Javier, we're too old, man. I have one friend who's like a TikTok, you know, aficionado, my friend Kathleen. She's like celebrity status on TikTok right now. Uh, like <laughs> nobody our age can figure out TikTok. It's, it's, you know, it's crazy. It's influencer explain to me what Twitch is. I mean, I, I love all the apps, you know, don't get me wrong. It's, it's my job and I love them all, but I, I and I don't want to admit that I'm getting old, but like Instagram just updated and I was like, what? <laughs> well that and that's a good point like you know you you're getting older do you sort of see this um like for example like a lot of celebrities they get into other stuff right like there's no shortage of celebrities hawking products sometimes it's like a, in a superficial way like they're just like promoting it just to make a buck other times they're very passionate about it like you have hugh jackman has his coffee ryan reynolds has his tequila or vodka i believe it's vodka or gin and uh, the rock has uh tequila uh, mm -hmm. Clooney has his tequila. Uh, Snoop has it all. He has his Snoop own has it all. Do his you own. sort of see like, does the influencer train eventually stop? And then you're sort of like, well, now that I've had the influencer status, do I sort of see myself as the ultimate brand ambassador of something that I create, which is this CBD company? Like, is this the future for you? Uh, I think that's exactly it. And that's why like, I could have partnered with someone that's like, oh, we want you to be a brand ambassador for our CBD. I was like, I would rather be a brand ambassador for my own CBD that's part of a company that I own. And I think about that with every other thing that I do, whether it's like music or merch, like I would love to get my merch to turn it into a brand and get it into a store that lasts in perpetuity and doesn't die off when I die off because there is a limit to how long you can be an influencer and you know how long people are going to be interested in you and everyone's always talking about when they're going to fall off and stuff like that there's different waves of people that come and different styles of entertainment that people are going to enjoy and I don't know how long I'm going to last so <laughs> I got to, yeah. I got to make something out of what I have now. It's, it's like an investment, you know? Yeah. It's exactly what it is. Like an entrepreneurship is an investment in your future, you know, mm -hmm. yeah. what better way to capitalize your, your current success than create something lasting that could even generate intergenerational wealth. If you ever need that. Right. Yeah. Right. And it is true. Like it, you do see this with, with other you know, celebrities, influencers, people are trying to figure out what is their next step, you know, and, and also it's fun to get passionate about something that is yours. That is, that you can like give to people. Like you can tell the rock is very passionate about his tequila. Like all yeah. he does is post about this tequila, you know, he loves this, this idea that it's his and it's something that will live on, you know, after he's gone there, hopefully he will build this brand, you know, George Clooney, like Casamigos, it's Casamigos, Huge. you yeah. know, like yeah. everybody will remember that's exactly. going to be his forever. And really, we haven't really seen that with CBD. There's been a few athletes and people who have gone into CBD, but we we want to be the really the premier, you know, CBD company by influencers that is something that is owned and operated by influencers that really does appeal to that 18 to 34 year old because that is so heavily our demo because, you know, that young working professional, that college student, those people as a way to not treat or cure or anything, you know, but as a way to you prevent and start on that like path of homeostasis from day one, you know, 18 years old, you developed, you're an adult, start worrying about your health for the future. Don't start worrying about it when you're 40, 50 or whatever, start worrying about it at 25 or whatever. Yeah. It is. Especially for the athlete crew, right? Like you were talking about the, the CBD cream for muscle relieving and, and whatnot. Like a lot of folks, like in my mom's generation, I don't know if your parents were any different, like they couldn't discern between the two. Like in their minds, everything gets you high. But that's not yeah. the case. So like the CBD cream that athletes use, I mean, Javier has done some great coverage about Rachel Rapino, for example. Her CBD products are 
really geared toward athletes yeah, who yeah. need to recover. So like, yeah. that's something that I think a lot of that, you know, what's that? Uh, I, I, I said Megan Rapino and, and Sue Bird use, you know, CBD magic. Yeah. I spoke to a couple of times to use the CBD. So it's definitely a whole new thing. Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, we've had, I've emptied my clip. I don't know if uh, we can keep you any much longer. I don't know how much time we have, but I would love to. I think we are out of time. We are out of time. So before uh, we go, uh, Jay and Scotty, tell us one last time what the brand is, where they can find it and how they could buy some. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Our brand is iCBD. You can find it at iCBDoils.co. Yeah, we have a whole new relaunch of our website coming. We spared no expense and we really did it up for the new website, which we're so excited to launch. And then we also have the gummies coming. They are launched. They are launched. They will be in stock early next week. And I was trying to say they're launched as in like they're launched right now. Because oh, like, they are This launched. isn't coming out until... <laughs> Yeah, they, they'll be launched. <laughs> Our gummies are launched already. We recorded this a week ago or so. Okay. And then my last question is how long until you get ICBD tattooed somewhere? Or if yeah. you have any empty spots that you're planning on, maybe the uh, the left uh, tricep or something. I, I'm, you know, I try to keep my body like a temple. It's clean, you know, tattoos. <laughs> so I, I don't think I'm going to do that. Yeah, he has don't be sad on his neck. So he kind of already has. <laughs> I got it. Right? He kind of already, already has it here. <laughs> You know what? You know what? What the tricky thing is with a guy with as much ink as you have, you can never not be in shape. If you I ever know. decide yeah. to like give up and just you know just know. forget about working out, all that's gonna look really oh, bad. You have to be ripped for the rest of your life. I, I have a smiley face on my bottom two abs, and if that gets you know it's, sad, <laughs> it's gonna be a wrap. <laughs> <laughs> too funny. That's a good place to leave it, Javier. What do you think? Great lesson. Yeah, just. You know, taking note and do, do not get my apps set. <laughs> Don't do it. <laughs> my rule is anything that you cannot see, like when you when you have a shirt on, just not, in case. Do not get your abs points. tattooed unless you're getting abs tattooed. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> it's a good incentive to stay. That's a good one. Just a Batman thing. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for having us. Yeah. You guys are great. Best of luck to you. Keep in touch on any more product launches, any way this company takes you. We'd love to hear about it. Keep us in the loop. Absolutely. Awesome. Sounds good. Thank you. And you yeah. are to keep in touch with us. If there's anything you want to let us know about. <laughs> yeah. I, I want a little re share the love when, when this comes out, just click share so we can get some of that uh, YouTuber influencer love that's going to come your way. Got you right here. Guys, check out the interview we just did on Bazinga. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You should, uh, yeah, let us know. Uh, we'll send you a little care packages too if you want to in the email or whatever. Send us your addresses. We can That's send you a little. Argentina. I cannot get anything. Oh, you're in Argentina. Okay. Yeah, it's going to be hard for you. Sorry. <laughs> send it to my. Send, I'm in New York and we're a little bit behind schedule uh, with legalizing stuff. But you can send it to my mom who probably needs CBD for aches and pains in New Jersey, which just legalized everything. Right. Thanks, guys. I appreciate the talk. Yeah, us too. Thank you, everyone. Take care. Uh, and join okay. us in the next Benzinga Cannabis Hour every Thursday, 4 p.m. Eastern and for our very special editions. Thank you guys again. Have a good one. Thank you. Thank you. Adios. Have a good one.